One of the things uh, about Portland I love the most is that it, uh, this city has nearly a hundred distinct neighborhoods. And one of my favorite things to do, of course, as a realtor, is to match my clients to neighborhoods and homes that really suit them. Um, where they are in their lives, what their current lifestyles are like, or what they like them to be like, how they want to feel in their new home, and also um, what they want to be able to do close to home, maybe even right out their front door. All those good things. So naturally, I ask a lot of questions. Uh, and you know what I hear most often is that people, especially people moving to Portland or moving in Portland, really like to be in a walkable neighborhood. In this Stacy's Top 6 video, I'm sharing my own personal favorite Top 6 Portland walkable neighborhoods. Um, and all of them have really high walkability scores, but they also have their own unique personalities. So each one is pretty different from each other, just to give you a little bit of a sampling. And I'm sharing them in haiku with just six descriptive words and a really, really quick overview. So stay tuned. My first choice is kind of a no-brainer uh, with a walk score of 97 and over 500 restaurants, coffee shops, and bars, along with tons of shops and boutiques. It truly is the most walkable neighborhood in Portland, the Pearl District. The Pearl District in Haiku. High rises with views, warehouses morphed into lofts, art, food, drink, coffee. Six words I, you, I chose to describe the pearl. Sleek, showy, delicious, classic, charming, playful. The Pearl District is a west side neighborhood. So it's west of the Willamette River, which really kind of divides the city into east side and west side. Uh, it starts at the waterfront and heads west toward the hills. I think the Pearl has a really interesting history, one that I think is worth mentioning. Uh, prior to 1990, it really just was a bunch of abandoned warehouses, long forgotten industrial sites and blue collar cafes. But then in 1971, it started to change when the now very famous Powell's Books opened there and soon became a Portland landmark and to this day is still the largest new and used bookstore in the world. Then, in the late 1970s and early 80s, artists started to move into the Pearl to take advantage of these huge empty warehouses, uh, you know, where they could have these great lofts and rent them for close to nothing. But of course, soon after, investors kind of caught on and began to buy up those warehouses and convert them into the gorgeous industrial living spaces we know today. Uh, art galleries and eateries, of course, soon followed. Um, and then the city got involved and developers got involved and they created the Pearl as we know it today. The Pearl is a really active um, neighborhood and there's lots to do and there are also lots of events there, but probably the most well known is the first Thursday Art Walk. Housing the Pearl includes newer sleek high rises near the waterfront, many with amazing views and all kinds of amenities, um, along with charming 100 year old condos converted from warehouses and historic apartment buildings. And now, on to number two, the Northwest District. Also known as Knob Hill, the Alphabet District, and a few other names. And now, the Northwest District, Knob Hill, uh, in Haiku. Grand historic homes, dining, cocktails, indie films, and Forest Park. In six words, grand, boutique, sparkly, historic, Victorian, hikeable. So I think I'll run with the name the Northwest District. Uh, the Northwest District is a densely populated retail and residential neighborhood in the Northwest section of Portland. There actually are several neighborhoods within the district. Um, or they're called several things, several pockets. One is Northwest 23rd Avenue, Northwest 21st Avenue, the Alphabet District, you'll hear that a lot, Uptown, and a few others. If you stroll along Northwest 23rd Avenue to shop and dine, you'll see that it's a bunch of repurposed Victorian homes that are now boutiques and restaurants, and that that runs for several blocks. And if you do that after dark, you will realize why I use the term sparkling. Also, be sure to check out Northwest 21st because it's got plenty of shops, restaurants, bars, and coffee shops as well. 
As you head up the hill, the homes become grander and, of course, more expensive. And at the top of the hill, you'll find our beloved Forest Park with its 70 miles of trails for hiking and biking. It's an uphill climb, but a super fun one to walk up to the play park, gorgeous place to do a little hike, and then head up to the Pitted Mansion, Portland's historic house museum, built in 1914. Check out the views, it's amazing, definitely worth the walk. Craftsman style and old Portland style houses from that same era, some converted to townhomes, um, are packed tightly together with grand old apartment buildings and some sleek newer condominiums. My number three choice is Multnomah Village. Multnomah Village in Haiku. Such a great village, shop for books, clothes, and work things. Uh, in six words, sweet, earthy, community, use that for a few, meandering, casual, unassuming. So I really felt like I had to include Multnomah Village in my top six. Um, it was a little different. It's, it's a suburb on the west side, but it really has a, persona a personality all its own. It's actually known as, or at least promoted as, the village in the heart of Portland. But I think it does kind of feel like a village, and um, it just has this great small town charm, though it's just minutes from downtown. Um, locally owned businesses, including charming cafes, galleries, bars, and shops make up this little village. Be sure to check out Annie Bloom's books, Antique for Toys, among others, and of course, be sure to brunch at Marco's, one of my favorite breakfast spots in all of Portland, though admittedly, I have a few. In terms of housing in Multnomah Village and around the village, there, there are condos and townhouses in this neighborhood, of course, but it's primarily a mix of detached homes built in the 40s through the 90s, with, of course, older homes and newer homes as well. Uh, in southwest Portland, one of the nice things is you lose the gridded layout of streets and standard size lots. So the neighborhood has more of an organic feel and feels a little less urban, if that's something that appeals to you. Number four, the half swanky and half funky Southeast Neighborhood Division Clinton. In Haiku, this neighborhood changed, now part metropolitan, but mixed with quirky. In six words, hip, metropolitan, modern, vintage, entertaining, and unique. Southeast Division and Clinton Streets from about 12th to 52nd Avenue offer a really eclectic mix of renowned restaurants, unique retail, and family-owned service businesses. Um, we are known, or this neighborhood is known for award-winning chefs and eateries, and it's a major draw to this area. Uh, the more recently developed areas in this business district, to me, uh, feel like a newer, more metropolitan Portland, at least on the east side. Still, some parts remain unchanged and, if I do say so, a bit quirky in a good way. Great energy, cheap eats to find dining here, um, and there's always lots to do. Housing in this area includes charming vintage condos to sleek modern units, um, along with older craftsman style home, homes and bungalows, very well known in Portland, to mid-century homes and apartments. My number five choice is our very own Hollywood here in Northeast Portland. I, I say it that way because I do have California clients that tease me that we have a Hollywood. I have to admit, it kind of surprised me to learn that the Hollywood district has a walk score of 94, but you actually can walk to a variety of places. They have their own restaurants, coffee shops, bars, alternative grocery stores, and of course the historic Hollywood Theater. In fact, um, you probably could run all your errands other than getting gas on foot. But I think my fondness for this neighborhood comes primarily from my love of the Hollywood Farmer's Market. I definitely, when I'm there, I get a real sense of community and um, I just love the vibe. It just feels like a happy place. In terms of housing in Hollywood, there, no surprise, are lots of craftsman bungalows, very large and some very small with huge front porches. I lived in Hollywood for a while and one thing I loved is that neighbors get to know each other and they stop to chat if you're out in the yard or hanging out on your very coveted front porch. And we made it to my number six, although Again, these are not necessarily in order, and I have so many favorites, but uh, my number six is the very fun and funky Mississippi neighborhood in Northeast Portland. 
uh, the Mississippi neighborhood in Haiku goes something like this. Best street fair ever. Uh, blocks and blocks of art, music, food, eat, drink, shop, repeat. My six words for Mississippi, whimsical, quirky, alternative, musical, and crafty. That's because you'll find lots of music at a couple of great music venues, uh, lots of great local shops and pop popular restaurants and bars uh, on this really historic North Street. And just a little side note, just half a mile south of the Mississippi neighborhood are even more acclaimed eateries and bars on the up and coming, newly developed or fairly new, newly developed North Lakes Avenue. But now we have to come back to Mississippi because we haven't even talked about the Mississippi Street Fair. Every summer it's a big, and I mean big party, with great music and dancing every block or two, arts and crafts for miles, every kind of food and beverage you could ever want, artisanal everything, and throngs, thousands of contented, happy, singing, dancing people all enjoying everything that Mississippi has to offer. And that, my friends, is my Stacy's top six walkable neighborhoods in Portland, Oregon. And to be honest, again, I really have at least twice as many favorites, and they change on a regular basis depending on what fun I've had recently. So do check in again. Um, I'm already feeling the need to cover them as well. So there may be several more videos. But for this one, I hope you found the information helpful. Please do leave a comment and let me know if you have any questions by, leaving, again, leaving a comment or reaching out to me by phone, text, or email. I would love to hear from you. I'm Stacy Butchart, and I'll see you next time.